In this video we'll be talking about chapter 21 section 2 which deals with radioactive decay. Now radioactive decay is the spontaneous disintegration of a nucleus into uh, smaller nuclei accompanied by a particle or a radiation emission. Now what does that mean? So if we have a nucleus like one that's drawn here, radioactive decay would be if this nucleus comprised of two neutrons and two protons were to break up into one of one proton uh, and two neutrons and a separate proton. That is, you know, uh, you'd have a nucleus here, a nucleus here, and then probably some sort of radiation given off in the form of light. And this radiation, nuclear radiation, is defined as particles and uh, electromagnetic rays, so X-rays, gamma rays, light rays, given off by uh, radioactive nuclides. And radioactive nuclides would be like this over here. Simply the unstable nucleus that undergoes decay is the radioactive nuclide. Moving on now to types of radioactive decay. Now there's five main types, the first of which is called alpha decay. And that is basically a helium-4 nuclei. So two protons and two neutrons bonded together uh, decaying off of a standard nucleus and it's usually represented by the symbol alpha which is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Now uh, it's given the symbol of a helium nucleus because for all intents and purposes it is a helium nucleus. Um, so if we were to do a example of alpha decay we would take something like polonium-210 and decay it using the alpha particle 2, 210 minus 4, 206, 84 minus 2 is 82, and the element number 82 is lead. So polonium decays into an alpha particle and lead 206. The next example is beta decay, which is essentially just the loss of an electron, or the emission of an electron rather, from the nucleus. And this happens when there are too many neutrons. So what ends up happening is that a neutron, in order to fix uh, this too many neutrons, uh, decays into, you take your uh, neutron and decay it into an electron and a proton. So basically this neutron changes into a proton, loses a bit of mass in the form of an electron and uh, changes completely what nucleon it is. So you can see that you know you have one AMU over here and one AMU over here as well as no charge and no charge. So if you were to write a full equation for say the decay of carbon-14 which is used uh, extensively in carbon dating, you would bring up the element number one to make it into a nitrogen through the process of transmutation and instead of writing an electron, what you write is the symbol beta, because this is beta decay after all. Now positron emission is very similar in that, in except for that instead of emitting a electron, you emit a positron, which is the antiparticle of an electron. It's basically an electron, so it has the same mass, spin, what have you, except with a positive charge. And this is when uh, there are too many protons in an atom. It will decay into a neutron to balance out the stability, bring it back into that band of stability we talked about in the last video. So if you have your proton with one AMU and one charge, it can decay into a neutron and a beta particle, which is just a uh, positive electron. For example, uh, potassium 38, which is found in bananas, decays into argon 38, which is more stable, and emits a positron, also with the symbol beta as above. Another way for radioactive decay to occur, to occur is actually to capture an electron. So if there are uh, 
once again, too many protons in a nu nucleus, you can take sometimes a uh, nucleus will absorb one of its inner shell electrons and then that will combine with a uh, oh that's a negative will combine with a proton to form a uh, brand new neutron for example silver 106 uh, can capture one of its inner electrons to yield palladium 106. Lastly there are gamma rays usually represented by the uh, Greek symbol gamma. Wow that's poorly drawn there. The Greek symbol gamma and these are not particles like uh, alpha, beta, positron, and electron. Rather they are a photon or a particle of electromagnetic radiation. And these are some of the highest energy, highest frequency uh, photons in existence. So you have uh, accompanying all of these uh, gamma emissions often are the result of a nucleus dropping energy level due to decay from one of these other factors. Moving on now to the concept of half-life. Now, half-life is the time required to go from uh, your original sample of some isotope and have half of it decay away. For example, uh, radium 288 has a half-life of 1599 years, which means that if you start with one gram uh, today, 1,599 years from now, you will have half a gram. And then 1,599 years from then, you'll have a quarter of a gram, etc., going on and on until you have decayed away the vast majority of your sample. It's important to realize that uh, the greater the half-life, the more stable something is because uh, you're going to have less of it decaying in a shorter amount of time. Likewise, if you have a low half-life, you're going to have uh, the vast majority of your atoms decaying very rapidly, so you're going to have a lot more emission. Moving on now to the concept of decay series. Now, over here we have the decay series of uranium-238, and a decay series is basically a list of decaying nuclides, each represented by a box over here on the chart, uh, and the corresponding reactions represented by these arrows going from one nuclide to another. Uh, it's the series of elements and reactions that are produced via radioactive decay until reaching a stable nuclide over here down at lead 206. Now just for some more terminology, the parent nuclide is the original and heaviest nuclide in the decay chain. In that case it's uranium 238. And the daughter nuclides, uh, keeping with the familial relationship, are nuclides produced by the parent nuclides in the decay chain. In this case that would be thorium uh, 234. And in the case of this chart you have the number of neutrons listed on the x-axis and the number of protons listed on the y-axis. So when uranium first alpha decays into thorium-234, you drop by two protons and move to the left by four or by two neutrons. Now as we've already discussed, you can see that uh, these rapidly change from one element into another. For example, it goes from uranium to thorium to radium to uranium back down to thorium, etc., until you get all the way down to the stable uh, lead 206. Uh, however, this transmutation is uh, not the only way that transmutation can happen. For example, artificial transmutation is something that's practiced regularly, regularly. Uh, really regularly now uh, in particle accelerators 
all around the world. Basically you take the nucleus of some small element and then accelerate it using magnetic fields towards a rather larger nucleus in the hopes of creating uh, a new element. For example, all elements with an atomic number greater than 92, which is uranium, are artificial. For example, the plutonium that powers nuclear weapons or the americium in your smoke detectors is all made artificially through particle accelerators. And in the next video, we'll be talking more about this nuclear radiation and ways to mitigate its effects.